We've talked about friendships and fallouts between housewives a lot on this channel, but there's one that broke my heart above all others, which was that between Candy Burris and Phaedra Parks on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. It always confused me. I couldn't put my finger on what exactly happened. It seemed to start as a slow drizzle, with waning moments of sunshine and showers that suddenly erupted into an all-out Category 5 hurricane, leading to absolutely devastating consequences. The fallout between Candy and Phaedra is interesting because the end result is a clear bad guy versus good guy, but the path getting there isn't quite so clear, so let's try the highs and lows of their relationship. So with that, I present Candy vs. Phaedra Nuclear Fallout. So let's start at the beginning. Neither Candy nor Phaedra are true OGs, but they both joined the show early on, Candy in Season 2 and Phaedra in Season 3. Candy was a big get for the show, as she'd seen fame as a teenager, being a member of the girl group Escape, and had transitioned her career into songwriting, notably winning a Grammy for penning TLC's smash hit, No Scrubs. Her inclusion gave the show a wow factor, and she brought interesting storylines. Professionally, she was relaunching her solo singing career, and personally, she was dealing with the tension between her fiancé, AJ, and her mother, the formidable Mama Joyce, who will be a recurring figure in this saga, as well as living life as a single mother to her young daughter, Riley. Candy was the first genuinely well-known person to be cast on the show and had such a cool factor, but didn't really mesh with the other women. She was friendly with Lisa Wu, but they didn't share a super strong bond. Nini really didn't like her, feeling that she wasn't a good fit for the show. The two of them have kind of an interesting relationship throughout the duration of their time on the show. There's never like a season where it's Candy versus Nini as the main event, but they don't really mesh and are never all that close. My theory is that maybe Nini was a little threatened by Candy. After season one, Nini emerged as the undeniable star of the show, so maybe she was worried Candy's pre-existing star power could eclipse her own. They also are incredibly different, with Candy being one of the most low-key housewives of all time, in direct opposition to Nini being one of the most high-key housewives of all time. All this is to say, Candy and Nini are not close and never have been. This will be important later. The housewife she had the biggest connection with is Kim Zolciak, who is on the outs with literally everyone else. Kim has a bit of an agenda when befriending Candy, as she's dead set on living her dream of being a country music star and sees Candy as her ticket to get there. She's right, and Candy works absolute magic on Kim's track, tardy for the party, but the two quickly fall out when Kim doesn't want to pay her what Candy thinks is a fair portion of the earnings. The moral of the story is that Candy was an iconic get for the show, but didn't mesh too well with the other ladies. That is, until season three, when our second major player, Phaedra Parks Esquire, steps on the scene. I'm honestly a little frustrated that I can't find their true meeting. When Phaedra joined, she's already friendly with Candy. My guess is that Phaedra met her while she was test filming for the show, which, at least according to what I've read online, is when they have potential newbies film a little bit with an established housewife to see how they work on camera and to see if there's any chemistry with the other women. I guess it's also possible that they met prior to the show, as Phaedra was adjacently connected to the entertainment industry, being an entertainment lawyer notably representing Bobby Brown, but however they met, what we saw was the two of them becoming fast friends. Phaedra entered the scene as she exited it by seemingly lying about something ridiculous. On her way in, it was about the due date for the pregnancy she had gestating. It was extremely obvious that she was much further along in the pregnancy than she was claiming, but it was kind of hilarious, especially as the other women reacted to it. But isn't it dangerous to have a, a baby at six and seven months? Not if everything's fully formed. Shut up! That is so stupid! I'm thinking, bitch, you don't know when you got knocked up. Phaedra is a complex person. She's the lawyer married to the ex-con, a southern belle who is prim and proper, always having lemon and sweet tea prepared for any guests who may come a-calling, while also having a male stripper who can suck his own thing available on speed dial. This duality will become a major theme later on, but for now it made her an incredible casting choice for the show. She had this rare quality of being incredibly zany, but also incredibly coherent. She was controlled silliness. The other women are all a little bit apprehensive of her. They're put off by the due date murkiness and seem to find her a bit pretentious and full of herself. Phaedra is no doubt her biggest cheerleader. It's just like, go Phaedra, go Phaedra! She has a big issue with Nini on whether or not they knew each other while growing up in Athens, Georgia, the town I actually went to college in. We didn't go to high school together. No, nope. we didn't, because she's older than me. I However, am just a few years. <laughs> well... We won't go there, but, uh... We can. <laughs> Moral of the story, most of the women weren't exactly on the Phaedra train, but Candy was. She actually travels to go see the birth of their first son, Aiden, aka the prince, and reports back to the other women that she was, in fact, pregnant for the normal amount of time. Despite this somewhat rare moment of messiness from Candy, she really took to Phaedra, and we would see their friendship grow into full-on bestiehood over the next three seasons. So we don't really need to go into all of the nitty-gritty of their time as best friends, because it's honestly pretty stable, at least for a time, and kind of runs together. So let's focus 
more on what their friendship was like and what attracted them to each other as friends rather than a true timeline, but this section will cover seasons three through six, the true heyday of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. So I think the two really made sense as friends. They were similar in mindset and drive, but pursued very different goals so they weren't competitive in a way that, say, Nene and Kim were. Candy kept making moves in the music industry. We see her dive into country and gospel music, as well as work on her own career. We also see her really lean into her sexuality. This will become important later, but early on she has a web show, Candy Coded Nights. Candy Coded where she discusses topics related to sexuality, later branching this out into an adult toy line. Phaedra continued on with her legal career, unsuccessfully representing Sheree in a dispute with her ex-husband. She also kind of randomly decides to become a mortician, which gives us some incredible scenes. Do you know his birth date, by chance? Uh, April 10th, 1910. <laughs> 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 Such as our plan to become Atlanta's premier pet funeral planner, which sadly seems to get abandoned. It's this kind of stuff that makes Phaedra so compelling to me. She's absolutely gleeful at the thought of working with dead bodies and actually pulls it off, at least in my opinion, and making the whole thing campy rather than creepy. Like, these are very sad moments for people, but Phaedra makes the whole thing seem fabulous by getting carriages and top hats and all of that. She made it fun. She also makes other business forays, such as her taser line, Phaedra Sparks, as well as getting into the workout video business, which will cause a major issue between her and Candy later, but early on, it causes a massive rift with Atlanta It Girl and former Miss USA, Kenya Moore. In the group, Candy and Phaedra are a united front. They have other allegiances at times, notably in season 4 when they had the whole talls vs. smalls thing going on, but I think that was more a creation by Nini than really rooted in reality, as things are still tense between Candy and Kim, and neither seem all that genuinely close with Sheree. It's mostly just the two of them, and they seem to have a really genuine friendship, not just for the cameras. Candy witnesses the birth of Phaedra's second child, Dylan, aka Mr. President, and they spend a lot of time filming together. There's one scene where Phaedra goes to Candy's house, and the camera zooms in on a framed picture of the two of them that was just very telling to me that they were real friends, not Hollywood friends, as Yolanda Hadid, Foster Hadid might say. Personally, their lives kind of flip-flop in this era. When Candy joins the group, she's a single mother to her daughter Riley, engaged to a man named AJ, who sadly ends up passing away after her first season wrapped. She stays single for seasons three and four and is mostly career-focused. When Phaedra joins, she's newly married and pregnant, ready to have it all as a working mom and wife. Over the course of their bestie era, Phaedra introduces Candy to Mr. Todd Tucker, who is working on the show while the ladies took their cast trip to South Africa in season 4. Side note, I'm so obsessed with how much Mama Joyce and the other OLGs build him up to be this great big bad wolf and then it's just like, Todd? I don't know, like, I get he's probably not the person I would have seen Candy with either, but so many people go to such great lengths to villainize this man as this evil schemer mastermind after poor little Candy's money when it's just like, not true to me? He's just not that controversial. I don't know, I'd love to hear other people's thoughts on Todd, so please comment with your take. But okay, Todd sidebar over. So Candy and Todd fall in love and get married by a great big beautiful set of two houses and seemingly are happily ever after, but for Phaedra, things take a turn for the worse. So when she married her husband, Apollo, I was like, hmm, Apollo, he's kind of fine. Yes, I will use that Kenya clip every chance I get. Phaedra obviously knew he had a criminal past, but she claims that she didn't know he also had a criminal present, and between filming season 6 and the reunion, he gets arrested and charged with some sort of money laundering type of thing. This completely blows Phaedra's world the fuck up, and kind of begins the unraveling of her image and the relationship between her and Candy. But let's talk about that in a minute and finish off this era with some reflections on their friendship. I really just think they made sense. As mentioned, they're both incredibly driven women who weren't in direct competition with each other, so they really celebrated each other's successes. They were both mothers and close with their respective mothers. They bonded over their sexuality. Even though Candy isn't super eccentric the way Phaedra is, I think she can appreciate a good character and seem to kind of just get a kick out of Phaedra's antics. They had each other's backs when fighting with the other women, the biggest consequence being that Candy never really warmed up to Kenya on account of her feud with Phaedra, which got really nasty really quickly. Just because this is somewhat important to the tale, a quick reminder is that Kenya stepped on the scene in season 5 and took the reins of the show completely. She and Phaedra got on really well until Kenya started crossing the line with a hollow, causing them to completely fall out, especially when Phaedra didn't agree to the financial terms of the donkey booty workout DVD Kenya was helping her produce. Foreshadowing. Escalating to accusations that Kenya was bipolar and an alcoholic, which led to Kenya making a rival workout DVD, Stallion Booty, and body shaming Kenya, which then led to Apollo claiming Kenya was texting him and propositioning him in Los Angeles. The texting thing will be important later. But aside from the whole Kenya thing, we are starting to see some real cracks in Phaedra's relationship with Apollo. The blogs, an ever-looming presence on Atlanta, have been reported 
reporting that they're splitting up, which they claim is not true. He spends a lot of his time at the strip club with Peter Thomas, and we see a lot of bickering between them. But Apollo has forged a friendship with Todd, and we see a lot of couple time with the four of them. This will also become important later. So yeah, we got four great seasons, seeing them grow what appears to be a very real friendship with mutual respect and appreciation, and see Candy's life get increasingly more stable as Phaedra's completely falls apart. So this takes us to season seven, our next era, Cracks in the Foundation. This season, we start to see some movement in their fallout. Two big things have happened in the off season. Candy and Todd have gotten married, and Apollo's in deep legal trouble. The season opens with his sentencing. He gets eight years, and Phaedra has essentially cut him off. She's staying at a hotel, claiming that the paparazzi is outside her house, and claim Apollo refutes. She doesn't go with him to his sentencing, so he turns to Todd instead. Candy is kind of put in an awkward position. Todd is openly team Apollo and thinks it's messed up that Phaedra is not supporting him, but Candy is maintaining her loyalty to Phaedra. Phaedra herself obviously has a lot she's dealing with. I know there are rumors that she's more involved in Apollo's legal business and all of that, but I don't know. I don't want to publicly get that messy, so let's take Phaedra at face value and assume she didn't know anything about what Apollo was doing. I think this would be a massive betrayal, especially in putting his freedom at stake when he has two young sons. Apollo kind of argues that Phaedra wanted to live this luxurious lifestyle and maybe he felt like he had to resort to illegal means to keep up with the leakses or something, but either way, he made bad choices that took him away from his wife and kids. I think their marriage was already shaky, this will become very evident soon, so I'm not sure it's a huge surprise that she didn't quote-unquote stand by her man during all of this, but it's upsetting to Apollo. He retaliates by showing up to a cast event which Phaedra isn't at and cops to making up the whole thing about Kenya texting him in a LA. This is kind of a paradigm shifting moment for Candy, Todd, and Peter because they'd been defending Apollo to the end of the earth and had been icing Kenya out in large part because of this, so it puts them in kind of an awkward position. Candy apologizes to Kenya for not hearing her side, but Nini, who's fallen out with Cynthia, has become an ardent Phaedra defender and starts spinning conspiracy theories that Apollo is actually lying about lying, so Kenya is still in the wrong. Candy is team Phaedra, but here's where we start to see some cracks. First in their attitude towards how Phaedra will handle the kids seeing Apollo when he's in prison. Phaedra doesn't like the idea of bringing them to see him in there as she doesn't want to normalize prison and doesn't want to set that example for her boys. She's also worried that it could be a traumatizing experience for Aiden and Dylan to see their dad in prison, and she's worried about the other inmates and visitors being inappropriate around children. One thing that's really clear about Phaedra is that she really values her role as a mother and thinks the world of her boys. Amongst all of this high drama, we're getting just as many cutesy cutaway scenes of Phaedra with her boys at bath time and visiting puppies and really cutesy stuff, so I think it was really important for her to prioritize their innocence and was very mindful with what she exposed them to. Candy has a different take as she talks about growing up and visiting relatives and loved ones in prison and didn't think the experience was as crazy as Phaedra is trying to put on. I think she, along with Todd, thinks that the more traumatic thing would be for the boys to not have a relationship with Apollo while he's away, and this would serve as one of the big catalysts in their fallout. At one point in season 7, Phaedra goes over to Candy's house and Candy surprises Phaedra by bringing around her cousin who grew up visiting his dad in prison. Phaedra knows that Candy isn't doing this maliciously to put her on the spot or anything, but really doesn't want this situation to be happening and isn't too eager to talk about Apollo. Despite this simmering tension, the two remain good on the surface. Phaedra isn't hanging out with the group too much, but she still makes time to see Candy, and Candy often serves as Phaedra's spokesperson of sorts when the other women ask about her. For Candy, things are mostly stable. She's settling into married life, but is still dealing with Mama Joyce's ire towards the great big bad Todd Tucker and now his mom. She also takes it really hard when the play she's working on gets canceled. So like, not everything is going right in Candy's life by any means, and she's dealing with pain for sure, but her situation is much more stable than Phaedra, who deals with a very scary Apollo right before he goes to prison. He fails to report when Phaedra thought he was supposed to and comes barreling into their house, acting totally unhinged, wanting to burn the whole place down. Phaedra felt like he didn't have a lot to lose, and her mom was certainly fanning those flames, so I have to imagine Phaedra was genuinely in fear of her life. Apollo was also spreading rumors that Phaedra was having an affair with the mysterious Mr. Chocolate, who is later speculated to be Potomac's own Jamal Bryant, so yeah, Phaedra was going through a lot. Here's where the divide really gets going, though Candy isn't really informed. At this point, Nini has really stepped in as Phaedra's confidant. She's been calling Phaedra every day to check on her, which Phaedra really appreciated as she hadn't been getting this need filled from her bestie, Candy. I think there was some sort of element of strategery in this from Nini. As mentioned previously, she was on the outs with Cynthia Bailey, her usual partner in crime, and in desperate need of an ally, so she turns to Phaedra, whom she'd never really been friends with. In fact, they kind of hated each other for a large part of their run, but after spending enough time around each other, they've warmed up to one another to some degree. Remember that Nini and Candy have never really gotten along, but don't typically go at each other, like, actively. They're more in a very quiet cold war rather than an active battle, and it seems Nini sees an opportunity to make a big blow against the candy-coated nation by buddying up to Phaedra and begins to see some real returns when she goes to visit her, for some reason dressed up as the Bride of Frankenstein. Was this just like a look she was trying out? Was it for something? It's just strange. But yeah. 
Deidre is starting to feel kind of weird about Candy not calling her and comforting her. She doesn't totally let Candy into how she's feeling, but I think emotional nurturance isn't something that comes naturally to Candy. She outright says she's not the ooey-gooey comforting type, and Phaedra prides herself on how private she is, so it seems like it was a situation of neither making the first move to bring it up. Nini uses this with Portia's assistance to start fanning the flames between the two of them. They are quick to point out that Candy was the last to leave with them when Phaedra and Candy got into it over rumors of Mr. Chocolate, and asked Phaedra consistently how she feels about Candy not to defending her. I think this was a big factor in their fallout. We'll see that many people played a hand in pushing them apart and fanning these flames, but it really started here, at least as we saw it, with Portia and Nini riling them up. Candy thinks this newfound friendship Phaedra has going with Nini is bullshit and doesn't get why Phaedra is trusting her after all they've been through, but I don't know. I think in a way Phaedra always looked up to Nini and wanted to be her friend. Nini seemed to literally be that cool older girl growing up for Phaedra that I'm sure we all know and idolize. Plus she had become such a star that I can see Phaedra being kind of excited that Nini had suddenly taken an interest in being her friend. I can't say I wouldn't be. But Candy finds the whole situation bizarre, especially when Portia and Nini insist she comes to the group therapy situation Nini has arranged to work out her issues with Phaedra. What issues do I need to work out with Phaedra? These issues are news to Candy, and when she asks Phaedra about this, Phaedra finally tells her that she's been feeling a little slighted by Candy not reaching out to her in her time of need. Candy explains that she's been going through a hard time as her play's been canceled, which like, my love, read the room. I get that that sucks and she had to fire a bunch of people, so it's tough not to be taken lightly, but like Phaedra's husband just went to prison for eight years, leaving her a single mother of two toddlers. We do get some insight into why Candy reacted the way she did in later eras, but for now it seemed a bit insensitive. The two clear things up, but the tension is simmering on the back burner. Leading us to season 8 in our next era, not so peachy keen. The bestie era is officially over as Phaedra has a new partner in crime, Portia. This didn't come out of nowhere, we'd seen the two bonding more and more over these past few seasons, but now that Candy's out of the picture, the two are absolutely inseparable. And they seem to be real friends. We see them really opening up to each other and leaning on each other for support in between scenes of them shopping for sexy clothes and being playful. Phaedra's also getting close with the new wife on the block, actor slash director and former child star Kim Fields, who, side note, I've become utterly obsessed with, and even though literally nobody has asked, I will be dropping a Kim Fields video one day. But anyway, I think the duality of Phaedra is best on display when we look at how she approaches these two friendships. With Kim, she's a mother. She's a lead singer of the Christian Jewels. She's inspiring and smart and accomplished. But with Portia, she's deputy princess of Thoughtlandia. She's wild and crazy. These two sides have always been a factor for Phaedra, but for Candy, it's starting to become annoying, especially now that she's no longer on the inside and is being presented with Phaedra's wall of, well, fakeness. Candy's confused because whenever she sees Phaedra, they're cordial and cool, but she feels the tension and doesn't really know what the issue is. Todd, on the other hand, has a major issue with Phaedra that will really stoke their feud this season. While she was pregnant with Mr. President, like literally about to pop, she filmed a pregnancy-themed workout DVD that Todd produced. Apollo's legal issues then hit, so the tape was mostly abandoned and wasn't released, but Todd still held his end of the deal and wasn't paid in full by Phaedra, which he was understandably upset about. This was a running issue through the course of the season, with Candy not really wanting to get involved, but Todd consistently bringing it up to the point that he and Phaedra have a sit down later on where he produces literal receipts forcing her to concede and pay up. This will be all well and fine but Phaedra is pretty nasty in her confessionals talking about the situation. Poor Todd. He must be scrounging around the couch cushions for a spare change and rummaging through the ashtrays for quarters since I heard that his LA TV projects are all dried up. Or maybe his weekly allowance from Miss Candy isn't keeping him afloat anymore painting Todd out to be desperate and poor. She also seems to be attending Mama Joyce's course on how to bully Todd Tucker as she evokes this notion that Todd is Candy's sugar baby. Obviously, Candy doesn't know that this is happening in the moment, but at the reunion in the next season, this has obviously really upset Candy as it's disrespectful to her husband. I'd be upset if I were Candy too. In the moment, Candy finds Phaedra's behavior around the pregnancy workout tape kind of hypocritical. Candy is getting annoyed because Phaedra is always flashing her wealth and talking about how money is no object for her, yet when the time comes to produce some of said money, she pulls the single mother trying to make it on her own act to get out of it. To be fair, we only really see this behavior with Phaedra not wanting to pay for workout DVDs, as she had almost the same issue literally verbatim with Kenya Moore in season 5, aka the booty battle of the donkey versus the stallion, so maybe she just feels entitled to free workout tapes. I don't know. But yeah, despite the underlying tension, Candy and Phaedra are mostly making nice with each other, but we start to see that not everyone in Candy's life feels so favorable towards Phaedra Park's Esquire. We've already discussed Todd, but the two other Phaedra haters are Don Juan, Candy's right-hand man, and Mama Joyce. Don Juan is doing what he can to sway Candy against Phaedra. The two had had an intense discussion that led to them getting back to a better place, only for Don Juan to come in and mindfuck Candy into believing that Phaedra was being fake about the whole thing. You gonna put a marker over this chair. On this chair this day, Phaedra Parks got her Emmy with that fake-ass cry she gave to you. Aww. 
I don't, well, I hope it wasn't fake. A lot of people seem to think that Don Juan kind of says what Candy can in order to preserve her image. Whether that's true or not, I obviously don't know. I think we've seen a lot of evidence to suggest that Don Juan certainly has an opinion of his own and isn't afraid to get messy with the housewives, but I don't know. It's a theory I've seen a lot, so I thought I'd bring it up. Let me know if you think Candy is Wizard of Ozing Don Juan. Mama Joyce is also starting to turn on Phaedra, and though this will become more than evident in the next season, we see her kind of testing the waters, showing up unannounced to Phaedra's office and making veiled threats. Never want anyone to do anything to hurt her, to cause her to be upset in any way which the editors accompany with straight-up horror movie sound effects. As you know, Mama Bear. Like, is that a knife being sharpened? The real big on-the-table issue between the two of them this season is the Apollo of it all. He's officially incarcerated, and Phaedra is upset that Candy and Todd are supporting him. They even keep some of his stuff at their house, being greeted by the feds when they go searching for it, and the rumor mill gets churning that Phaedra was the one who called the feds. <laughs> Very interesting. I, you know, I've been out of town this week, so I haven't, um... Candy also disagrees with Phaedra's apprehension in taking the boys to see Apollo. Though it's not like he's down the street and it's a quick pop-in, he's in Kentucky and then Pennsylvania, so it's a whole big production. They still talk on the phone and email, and she does eventually take them to see him, and it's kind of anticlimactic. With Candy, Phaedra sees it as a betrayal that she doesn't have her back without question as she goes through so much strife, but I don't know. I don't think it's really Candy's nature to just unquestioningly follow someone, no matter how tight she is with them. She's always going to do and think what she really believes is right and best for her. Not to say she's a disloyal person, but my read on Candy is that she's incredibly independent and is okay being on her own. She achieved a high degree of success at a very young age, so she has the security both financially and just generally with who she is that I don't think she ever really needs anyone else and hasn't for the majority of her life. I don't find her to be all that close with really any of the other housewives, and I think she mostly just has a professionally friendly relationship with the others, not really letting them in. That's why I think this fallout with Phaedra is so painful for her. It was a real friendship. We don't see her breaking down and crying all the time about it, but it's clear it's causing her pain, especially with Phaedra having such seeming ease at icing her out. But from Phaedra's perspective, she's going through a major public humiliation, which is a very big deal for her as I think she's been raised to be kind of reputation conscious, and this quirky southern debutante with a bit of an edge persona she'd done such a great job building up over the years was crumbling because of her husband's mistake. Of course, there were stirrings of Phaedra being shady before, but this was like mainstream news. Plus, now she was solely responsible for both providing for and tending to her two young young toddlers, the prince and Mr. President, and I have to imagine that was unbelievably stressful. She had funneled a lot of her anger about the situation into Apollo, and here was her best friend keeping his motorcycle out of her house. For Candy, the situation is more nuanced, as her husband was very close with Apollo, so it was a balancing act. But for Phaedra, I think she just needed someone to be totally on her side, and Candy just couldn't give her that, so she found someone who could in Portia. I think Phaedra is very much a bestie type of person, where she always likes to have a partner in crime, and Portia was someone who suited her more in this stage of life. Candy was now married and pregnant and much more settled while Frick and Frack, as they would soon be deemed, were both single and had more question marks around their lives. I think Candy was feeling a bit hurt by them going off on their own as she had always been close with Portia, feeling like she had really went out on a limb supporting her by putting her in her play and helping her record a song. She had also taken Portia's side in her altercation with Kenya at the season 6 reunion and just didn't really get why Portia wasn't writing for her the way she was for Phaedra. After Don Juan does his best to make the situation worse, they finally talk things out and Portia explains that Phaedra just needs her a little bit more right now. By the end of the season, it's clear that the magic is gone and they seem resigned to just peacefully coexist. Until we get to our next era, tit for tat retaliation. So now we're at season 9, our last in this saga. Candy's had her baby ace and has already hit the ground running, making plans to open a restaurant, which is her main storyline for this season, along with dealing with her ex block, Riley's dad, who suddenly wants back into her life. She's mad about the disrespectful comments Phaedra made about Todd's finances, and Mama Joyce has turned into a full on Phaedra hater. Phaedra's focused on her divorce with Apollo and her philanthropic work. The divorce is a little murky as she eventually says it's finalized, but he's saying it's not, so. I don't know. But she's on a kick about being super private about the whole thing and only talking to Portia, who she's officially freaking frack besties with, about it. One major update is she and Kenya are starting to feel out of friendship, which leaves Portia feeling a little bit upset. Portia encourages Phaedra to stay surface level with Kenya, which she does, not opening up about the divorce or anything, but we see the two form a sweet bond, especially when they host a summer camp for kids affected by the water crisis in Flint, Michigan. They're really fun together, and I always wanted them to get past all of their issues and form a friendship, but Phaedra lashes out at Kenya for throwing a divorce party 
relief for her and Cynthia, who's newly split from Peter, and Phaedra takes it in the worst possible way. She once again slut shames Kenya and implies that she's the cause of her marriage breaking up. Now, this video is not about Kenya, but I think this illustrates just where Phaedra was at in this era. She was obviously feeling the pressure from all that had happened in her home life in the past few years, and is just hyper-reactive. Kenya was meaning to be celebratory and create an environment of sisterhood in this moment, and while you don't need to be Miss Cleo to predict that celebrating divorce isn't Phaedra's brand, it was also clear that Kenya meant well with what she was doing. This was such an over-the-top and needlessly cruel reaction that destroyed what could have been great movement for Phaedra on the show. But let's get back to Candy and Phaedra because there's a lot going on. Enter Mama Joyce. So, as mentioned, she's a certified Phaedra hater at this point and decides to do some recon on this whole divorce situation. She's been looking into Georgia law and has determined that Phaedra could be divorced by now if she really wanted to. She also gets really invested in this weird situation where rumors were swirling that someone had planted a bomb in Phaedra's office. He was looking for you and he was gonna blow you to f*** up. Phaedra publicly states that the whole thing was a misunderstanding and it was all just a former client dropping off some CDs and that the whole thing got blown out of proportion. She spins the blowback into standing up for black men, a cause she's really gotten behind in recent years, and I think doing some genuinely meaningful work. She set up a foundation, Save Our Sons, meant to empower young black boys, and meets with Congress people to discuss police brutality. She has hopes to set up college scholarships and we see her meet with Trayvon Martin's brother. I do think that this is something she's genuinely passionate about, but Candy sees the spin on the bomb situation as fake. As she knows that Phaedra privately was scared and had allegedly hired a bodyguard to defend her after this. But Phaedra feels miffed by the way Mama Joyce treated her and has her assistant arrange a sit down between her and Candy and it's showtime, baby. Candy thinks that they will be discussing the tension between the two of them, so she's not happy when Phaedra wants to stay focused on Mama Joyce's behavior. The two finally openly address some of their issues, such as Phaedra saying Todd was scraping the couch cushions for coins. Phaedra wants to stop regurgitating the past and doesn't get why Candy is so angry with her. She thinks that she's the one who should be angry as she's a single mother trying to get by, which is when Candy unloads all of the hypocrisy she felt about this situation, saying Phaedra was counting down the days till Apollo left and was practically engaged to someone new. She says she gets why Phaedra wanted to come off that way in public, but thought it was hypocritical to be throwing this pity party for herself when they both knew she wasn't really that upset about Apollo leaving. She didn't like that Phaedra went and cried to Nini about their friendship tension, that she wasn't even crying about Apollo, she was crying about them. Phaedra says that maybe she loved Candy more than she loved Apollo, to which Candy at first seems touched by and then suddenly starts laughing and says she can't take Phaedra seriously and leaves the luncheon. I kind of wonder if this combo was edited weirdly or something because it was a very abrupt ending to me. But I think this was the true nail in the coffin in their friendship from Phaedra's perspective. Candy all but confirmed these alleged Mr. Chocolate type of rumors, which is def a no-no from Phaedra. Even though it's clear to us outsiders that she doesn't really live this traditional life, I think she wants to maintain some plausible deniability and present an image that she has the utmost respect for the institution of marriage. I don't think hardly anyone would blame her for starting to date when her marriage is clearly over and her estranged husband, who we would soon find out is also dating someone else around this time, was said to go to prison for eight years, but she's committed to this narrative. Think all the way back to her first season, it was incredibly obvious that the prince wasn't conceived before she and Apollo were technically married, but like, who cares? We're living in the 21st century here, and I really don't think the Bravo viewing audience in general is going to be scandalized by this. We're much more skeeved out by the obvious lying. But someone who does care is her mother, who is a pastor, and I understand that maybe her mother's opinion matters more to her than the general public's. But yeah, I just wanted to lay the foundation that Phaedra seems to be comfortable comfortable lying in order to preserve her image. So here's where things get messy. There's another big player in our story, the always a friend, never a housewife Shamia, who first came on the scene as Portia's real life best friend, but has stuck around as she's grown quite close to Candy. One person she's not close to, Miss Phaedra Parks, who she absolutely hates claiming that Phaedra hit on her husband. There's no love lost on Phaedra's end, and when Sheree, in her bone collecting era, tells her that Candy was talking about her dating someone else before Apollo went away, she fires back with claims that Shamia and Candy are very close, making the implication that they hook up, with Todd as a third sometimes. This moment was kind of weird as the way it was shot gives the illusion that Phaedra wasn't aware that she was being filmed, but I don't know how she wouldn't be. It was a filmed lunch. Like, maybe they put the cameras down for moments, but this was her seventh season, so she had to know that they'd pick this up. I don't know. But yeah, so Sheree's head is spinning at the news that Shamia and Candy are more than friends, and the situation gets exacerbated when Portia, who is also mad at Candy for talking about Portia's past with Riley's dad, flippantly tells Sheree that Candy is in the closet. It's more said as one of those kind of dumb comebacks Portia is prone to making, but Sheree looks is onto it and is holding onto this little bone, telling Marlo, who hasn't been featured very heavily lately and seems keen on making a moment. Sheree wants to find the right time to ask Candy about this rumor, but Marlo seizes control of the narrative and asks Candy in front of everyone while glamping. Candy, are you a lesbian? Leading to one of the most iconic scenes in Housewives history. Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? 
shit. Portia finally realizes that she, in fact, was the one who said that, but Sheree knows that the true originator of the conversation was Phaedra, who had sat quietly through the conversation. Candy thinks it's rich that Portia is talking about her exploits with women when Portia also hooks up with girls. She's the B in LGBT. And had heavily come on to her one night a few years ago, propositioning Candy and Todd for a threesome to which they declined. Candy had never said anything about this, but since Portia made the first strike, it was on. And with that, the end is upon us and the nuclear missile is officially on route. Portia and Candy go out to discuss the whole situation. The conversation gets very graphic very quickly. Your tongue kissed me in my mouth Let's also and you said you wanted to eat me till I can't. That is okay. a f***ing lie. Is, you took me down, bitch. You are- Leading to Portia accusing Candy and Todd of intending on drugging and raping her and Shamia to take them back to their sex dungeon. Candy is absolutely flabbergasted, denying the whole thing and just not really knowing what hit her. We see later she gathers the girl, sans of course Portia and Phaedra, to discuss the situation and after processing the whole accusation, she is obviously very mad. This goes above and beyond what is fair game on the show and she just can't even believe that this is happening. This is a malicious and violent crime she's being accused of. This isn't more manner of her Chateau Charest, this is serious. She makes a point not to drink or do drugs so she's very put off by the drugging accusations and while sexual freedom may be her brand, rape is not. Luckily, nobody even questions if the whole thing is true and are just weirded out by Portia saying this. Portia, however, is sticking to her guns, evoking the name of Bill Cosby. One person we're not hearing from is Phaedra. While all this is going on, she's planning a gospel revival thing. She's also assisting an ex-employee of Candy's, Johnny, in finding legal representation for a lawsuit against Miss Burris Tucker. Candy said she fired him because he wasn't pulling his weight, but was still supporting him in his event planning business. He says she made him work insanely long hours, didn't pay him fairly, and stole his idea for a restaurant. Whatever the truth is, it's very underhanded for Phaedra to indulge this. To be fair, Johnny approached her and she didn't take on his case personally, but she also found and escorted him to a lawyer who did take on his case. She even performed some bar napkin calculations and says that Candy is running a plantation with the wages she was paying. To me, this demonstrates that Phaedra was at a point where she was willing to cross the line and jab Candy where it hurt. Candy had become increasingly more and more of a businesswoman as the series had progressed, and by this point in the show, her business life was one of Candy's biggest priorities. Candy doesn't get wind of this until after the lawsuit is filed, and while she knows it's frivolous and will go away, the rumors of Phaedra's involvement have gotten to her. Phaedra feels justified as she had found out Apollo's new fiancé had come to the OLG opening party. Candy knew this looked messy, but she genuinely had no involvement in setting it up. She's not exactly warm to the fiancé, but it still looks bad. At the finale party, the reveal of the long-awaited Chateau Charest, the two have a sit-down. Candy is forthright with knowing how bad it looked that Apollo's new fiancé was at her restaurant tasting, but asks Phaedra about the lawsuit situation, to which Phaedra evokes attorney decree and says she cannot speak on it. And with that, Candy knows that there's no reviving this friendship. She would soon find out just how dead it was. And with that, we've made it to the big event of the video, the season 9 reunion. There's a lot of jabs here and there, but when the sex dungeon thing gets brought up and Andy asks Portia why she believed this in the first place, Portia drops a bomb. I was served a cease and desist by Candy, and I no longer can speak on the subject, so what I want to do is have Phaedra speak because she's the one who told me that Candy said that. All hell breaks loose. We get an answer to who said that. You said that? and Phaedra cops to repeating it, but only because she heard it. Portia says that Phaedra told her on multiple occasions that she heard it directly from Candy, that she wouldn't have repeated third-hand information. She's insistent with her story. Phaedra says she heard it directly from Candy and had told Portia this on multiple occasions. Portia is mad. Everyone's mad. Phaedra is kind of caught in this lie and can't really wiggle out of it and admits she screwed up. Candy is just shocked. Candy had talked to Phaedra about the situation with Portia in Hawaii, and Phaedra just sat there and listened and didn't say anything. Nobody can understand why Phaedra would do this. She's an attorney. She knows this was slanderous. They just don't get how it could have escalated to this level. And honestly, I don't either. I get Phaedra was upset that she felt like Candy wasn't there for her in the situation with Apollo. I can understand that she was not able to see that Candy isn't the nurturing, let me give you a hug and take your pain away type. I get that she felt betrayed when Candy implied she was cheating on Apollo, as the closest they once had served as a legitimizer to these rumors. I get wanting to get back at her for these grievances, but in what world is making up a lie that your former friend wanted to drug and rape your mutual friend a proportionate retaliation? I couldn't find any instance, really, of someone believing these rumors to be true about Candy, but had they been taken seriously, Candy would be living a very different life than she is right now. It's just an absolutely insane thing to lie about. Phaedra has said that she was fed this rumor by production, and we'll explore this theory soon, but for now, let's take it as it was presented on the show. Phaedra was in a bad place emotionally, prone to overreaction and cruel lashing out as evidenced by her blow-up on Kenya over the divorce party. She seemed to be comfortable lying if it meant protecting her reputation, as evidenced by the pregnancy timeline and these rumors that she was dating before she was officially 
officially divorced from Apollo. We know she wanted to hit Candy where it hurt, as evidenced by her indulging the lawsuit against her. The show certainly set us up to believe that Phaedra wanted to hurt Candy and use Portia as a proxy to do so, thinking she wouldn't get caught. So yeah, Phaedra was fired from the show for this, which brings us to our next era, Aftershocks. Candy and Portia stay on the show, and while Portia feels the heat from the other women for a time, she eventually won them back over and becomes kind of the face of the show until she left after season 13. Candy has obviously stayed on the show, at least as of season 15, which is airing as I write this. She's taken the dungeon thing and turned it into a whole bit, but has maintained an anti-Phaedra stance. She gets asked from time to time how she'd feel about a return of Miss Parks, and the answer is always a resounding no. To me, the show has declined in quality ever since this season. They resorted to stunt casting for season 10, bringing back Nini and Kim Zolciak, but both of them had evolved since their Housewives Prime, and their return just wasn't satisfying to me. Since then, it's had its high moments, but I'll stand by my assertion that the golden era ended with season 9. Part of me wonders if what we had in those first 9 seasons was just lightning in a bottle, a touch by an angel amalgamation of pure perfection, and it's unreasonable to expect lightning to strike twice. I don't know, I mean the show isn't like dead or anything, but I'm not pining to watch it each week either. I'm hoping to get back to my season deep dives with the currently airing season of Atlanta, so I'll develop my thoughts more on this later, but let me know what you think of the current state of Atlanta. But yeah, so the Bravo viewing audience was obviously really mad at Phaedra. The backlash was palpable, and despite her claims that she was fed this info by production, she was pretty much disgraced. A rotted peach. That is until the summer of 2022 when we had the Phaedra Sans, starring on the sheer perfection that was Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip 2, as well as making a guest cameo appearance on The Real Housewives of Dubai. It really sucks that all this went down the way it did, because I absolutely love Phaedra before all of this, and I know I'm not alone in that. She was just such an eccentric and funny housewife and so much fun to watch. She was shady and had a southern glamour that I just couldn't resist. I actually considered myself a Phaedra stan, not really being able to see her clearly until I set out to making this project. I knew objectively she was in the wrong, but my love for her based on her first six and a half seasons really clouded me from seeing that she really did seem to get lost in the sauce and seemingly lost herself in the show and with her desire to hurt Candy. I didn't want it to be true and lent a lot of credence to the alternative narratives that have been presented regarding the situation, trying to find a way to make Phaedra not as at fault as I now believe she was after such a close watch and examination of the situation. I think sometimes when we stand a housewife, we can't see them clearly and we'll go through mental gymnastics trying to defend them, but with this situation like this, there's really no defending Phaedra. Unless you give in to some of the conspiracy theories, which I'll cover soon. There was absolutely no reason to go this far in trying to defame Candy, and she really just ended up hurting herself, Portia, and the Bravo viewing audience by getting herself kicked off the show. We all do bad things, and none of us watch these shows for morality lessons, but there's no enjoyment in watching someone try to ruin another's reputation in this way. It's tough, because up until this point, Phaedra was my second favorite housewife, but going out the way she did really tarnished her legacy, and it's hard to exalt her when she treated Candy so maliciously. And while none of us are totally angelic or devilish, we're all a little gray, that's just the nature of humanity, and I don't think we should be judged solely on our worst moment, this is definitely just a tough situation. What do you guys think? Does the good outweigh the bad, or does the bad action replace the legacy she had created? It's a really complex situation. But I do want to explore some of these alternative narratives, because while I don't think Phaedra is totally innocent in this situation, I do think that there is a fair case to be made that there was more to the story, which I do think holds water now that they are working so hard to bring her back, as in addition to her appearances on Dubai and Ultimate Girls Trip 2, it's been reported that Phaedra will be joining the cast of Married to Medicine and will be featured on Ultimate Girls Trip 4. Alright, so let's get to these alternative narratives. And just to clarify, these are 100% just rumors. I'm not saying any of these things are true and that I believe them, but I don't think this video would be complete if I didn't include them. So the most popular one, the one that Phaedra has been reported to claim, is that production came to her with this information and she told Portia out of concern. It's even been reported that she said all of this at the reunion, but it was edited out and that she was really fired for revealing production secrets. On social media and in the blogs, the blame tends to get pinned on Carlos King, a former producer on both Atlanta and New Jersey, who has gone on to become somewhat of a star in his own right. He's definitely dedicated to his craft. In Not All Diamonds and Rosé, he talks about hiding under the table during the Last Supper on season one of The Real Housewives of New Jersey to give Danielle the copy of Cop Without a Badge that ignited the infamous table flip. So we know he wants to make a good show, but I think it's a far cry between handing someone a book that's already a topic of conversation and making up rumors that a cast member of your show is going to commit a violent crime against another. Carlos left the show at the same time Phaedra did, which added fuel to this rumor, but he has said that he wasn't fired but left to strike out on his own. He has gone on to continue working in television production, being at the helm of the Love and Marriage franchise, and maybe I'm naive, but if it was common knowledge he'd made up a claim of the magnitude of Dungeon Gate, I feel like he'd be blackballed to some degree. He and Candy did fall out, but they both have vehemently denied it had anything to do with season 9. She says it was over him trying to make a movie about escape. There's also some alleged issue that happened between Todd and Carlos working on another show, so I don't know. I also read a comment on a message board, credible source 
Ryan know that he was the one bringing Candy's ex block to film that season, as well as brought in Apollo's Beyonce to the OLG preview event, so there could be any number of reasons for their fallout. But the network has been very good to Candy. She's had more spinoffs than anyone, so I don't think she'd throw them under the bus and admit to the rumors being true, as it would jeopardize the viewers' trust in the network if it was confirmed a member of production set up the Dungeon Gate thing. Another rumor is that it was a game of telephone-style mix-up regarding escape members. Another member of Candy's band was accused by a large number of victims of a very similar crime that Candy was by Portia, although the charges did end up getting dropped. The accusations go back to at least 2005, so it's very possible that this was in the rumor mill. And if Phaedra didn't personally know Candy very well, I guess I could see the mix-up happening, but I don't know. I find it hard to believe that Phaedra would mix up Candy and her bandmate, but it's something that's out there. The thing that makes these accusations murky is that Portia stated outright that Phaedra said Candy personally told her that this was the plan. In this situation, either Portia or Phaedra are lying. Portia didn't say Phaedra heard this somewhere, she said that she was told directly by Candy. I guess it's up to the individual to determine who is more credible between the two. But the network seems to have forgiven Phaedra for whatever has happened, as she's been so heavily featured in the past year. Her cameo on Dubai was very brief, and I think more of a stunt to draw viewers into the show. On Ultimate Girl Trip 2, she was an absolute delight. She didn't get involved in any of the drama, and was just kind of spiritual and funny. When the topic of why they left the show came up, Phaedra shut it down completely and alluded to her side of the story not being shared. If I recall correctly, Brandy Glanville has said that she talked more about the situation, but production chose not to air her comments. Now that she'll have a full season on Married to Medicine, I have to wonder if there's more time and space for it to properly be asked about and addressed. She'll also be on the fourth installment of Ultimate Girls Trip, so there's definitely potential for her to talk more about it or for others to demand answers from her. For me, I really don't know what I believe happened. With the close rewatch I did, I saw that the show definitely set the situation up to seem like she did, in fact, make the rumor up, but I think fair credence can be lent that there was more to the story when you consider that she is in her great return era. Let me know what you all think really went down. All in all, it really was just a terrible situation for everyone involved, Candy, Phaedra, and the viewers. It was an explosive moment for sure, but I personally didn't find it all that fun to watch. I don't think the majority of viewers like seeing things go this low. Plus, the repercussions really stalled out the momentum the show had going, and Atlanta hasn't been the same since her exit. I also wonder if Carlos King's exit is a factor in the decline of Atlanta. To pull this out from the season 9 situation and talk more generally about their fallout, I think it was in part a difference in emotional needs, as Phaedra needed Candy to give her a bit more tenderness with the Apollo situation, as well as the influence of others wanting to drive them apart, especially Nini, Don Juan, and eventually Mama Joyce and Portia. They were so good for so long, but when times got tough, their connection just wasn't strong enough to withstand the challenges. When Phaedra's life was falling apart, Candy's was stabilizing, and they had less and less in common. I think it's probably pretty easy to be jealous of Candy, as she's achieved so much success, is good at everything, and really has it all. We've seen a lot of people come after her throughout her years, while I can't think of a single instance of her instigating some drama that wasn't there against someone else. I'm not sure if this was what was going on with Phaedra, and it may just be a coincidence that the fallout started around the time Candy got more settled while Phaedra's life started to unravel, but I think it could have been a subconscious factor in why Phaedra wasn't very forgiving of Candy's initial slights as she may have been in earlier seasons. There could also be a factor of Candy not giving Phaedra the time and attention she previously had that could have also bred resentment. I think Phaedra has a lot of really great qualities, but she also has a vindictive streak, and while she stays relatively cool most of the time and doesn't really raise her voice, I think she has an inner rage and it comes out in more quiet ways that make her come off even sneakier and cunning than if she were to yell and scream when she gets mad. Her cruelty seems calculated, and I think that's why she's gotten more of the ire about the Dungeon Gate situation than Portia did. Portia came off as the patsy to Phaedra's planned strike against Candy's reputation. Whether that's what happened or not, that's how it came off to me and many others. But let me know if you buy into any of the alternatives narratives and if you think Phaedra can be redeemed from this. I'm seeing a lot of Phaedra praise, especially on the heels of Ultimate Girls Trip 2, so it seems like either enough time has passed for people to forgive her, or maybe they just didn't watch her last season of Atlanta. Phaedra has said she's not interested in coming back to the show, and now that she's got a spot on Married to Medicine, I don't see it happening. Plus, Candy has made it clear that it's a her or me situation, so I don't think we'll ever see them film together or come to any sense of resolution. I think Phaedra is a lot more fun to watch than Candy, but Candy is a fantastic housewife in her own right and a true Atlanta staple. The show would feel very different if and when she leaves it. It will be interesting to see if Phaedra ever truly shares her side, but based on the narrative we have now, I don't think I even need to ask if you're Team Candy or Phaedra, as I normally would in this series. It's a tragic tale, and at least to me, the saddest, most nuclear fallout of them all. So let me know your thoughts on this fallout, and let me know who else's fallout you'd like to see explored. I've got a few in the works already, as this is one of my favorite series on the channel. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I just hit 10k, which was a very exciting milestone for me, so I just want 
wanted to say a special thank you for all of the support and kindness you all have shown me. This channel has been such a source of joy for me, and I'm so glad I made it and get to connect with you all. If you want to connect on social media, my handles for Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram are deeply super fish. But for now, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye!